Hey y'all, I'm Pam with 44 Marketplace. And if today's your first visit to my channel, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. Please take a minute to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. And keep in mind, I try to put a material list in the comments below each one of the videos. If I miss something, please let me know. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I don't know how many of you guys have ever used Dixie Bell Sea Spray, but we are going to use it tonight on this piece. And the rule of thumb is, if you the more sea spray you put in your piece, the more kind of crusty it's gonna be. And this is kind of where we are with ours, okay? I like mine to be really thick and um, we are using, actually this is Dixie Bell's French linen with some coffee bean mixed in. I'm sorry, this is sawmill gravy. This is Dixie Bell's French linen, but it really wasn't dark enough for me after I got it in the tray. So I want it just a little bit darker and I want just a little bit thicker and you guys can see. This is a Drexel buffet that we're gonna be working on tonight. And it has some issues, like a lot of the pieces of furniture that I get. And we are going to give it a crusty kind of look. And you'll see what I'm talking about. We're gonna put just a little bit more in here. But we want this piece to look very old world. That's kind of what I'm going for with this piece. All right, so you can see how thick we are with this and with this. So we may make our dark one just a little bit thicker and we're gonna let it sit and we're gonna apply it second. This will make sense once I uh, get it. Now Dixie Bell Sea Spray, I'm gonna flip it up while I, while I mix this up. I'm gonna flip it up so you guys can see my beautiful paint booth. Um, Dixie Bell Sea Spray is a texture additive that you add to the paint. And typically you add it to the paint because you are going to, uh, you're going to sand back to it. But I'm not really, um, that's not my goal for this piece. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. All right, so let me throw this back out here. And I also want to clear up some things. Um, I guess even some other Dixie Bell retailers think I am a brand ambassador. And I am a Dixie Bell retailer in four locations. And I've been with Dixie Bell since 2014. And I was started with Dixie Bell when we had 23 colors, two top coats, and nine glazes, and that was it. So I have been with Dixie Bell through thick and thin. And uh, that's why I say, if you have a local retailer, hunt them up. If they've been in the game as long as I have, they've seen people come and go, things change, and they're gonna be an invaluable resource for you. All right, so I'm gonna flip you guys back down. I want you to see what we're gonna do. If you have a friend that's looking for an old world finish, pass this along to them because they may really like this. All right, so you can see my top is kind of messy. Doesn't matter though, because we are about to add something else to it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to add this on here and I'm gonna kind of brush it and pounce it. We're gonna start with our darker color. piece that has some a little bit of damage to the top I mean even if it doesn't have damage I know a lot of people they'll just sand it down and stain it and all that and that's not really I mean I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but I just feel like a lot of times the easy thing to do is sand it down paint the t sand it down stain the top and then paint the bottom or throw a transfer on it and I really just want something different for this piece so that's what we're gonna do and you'll see what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if this brush will do what I want to. Oh yeah. We're going to kind of put this on. I don't like the way that's going on. There we go, that's better. These brushes are the new Prima brushes that I told you guys about. They're amaze balls, I gotta tell you. Pretty pleased with them.
You want to make sure and grab your little edges while you're doing this. And you can make these peaks as tall as you want them to be or as laid down as you want them to be. If mine aren't fairly tall when I start, I kind of go back in and layer them back on there because I like to have them in there. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to do something on canvas later this month. I've never done it, so we're going to learn about it together. And as you can see, I'm kind of alternating the colors because I want it, I have a specific look in mind. see what I'm doing how I'm alternating the colors so that I can get the texture that I'm looking for and if you'll notice you can see some of the peaks are a little higher than others and I didn't get this one peaked up as much as I want so I'm going to go back and add a little bit more to this one and if you guys have seen have watched me you know that sometimes I like to do something that's a little bit not really the norm because anybody does the norm you know and I'm a working creative I don't just flip a couple of furniture a couple of pieces of furniture a week I I usually do at least one kitchen a month as well as the furniture and stuff besides my other businesses so I really like to do something out of the box when I get the chance because 95% of my work is custom work all right, oh, don't want that color there. I want to alternate, Ooh, trying to get a, make the great escape. Now you want your colors to kind of overlap as well. So if you get the chance, you want them to kind of overlap a little and it'll make sense once we get, we're gonna, we're gonna keep doing this until we get about halfway across. And I know normally my lives are pretty quick and done this one may be a little longer than usual, though, for us to get this done the way I want it to be done. And if you have a top that has like water damage or it's a pressed wood piece of furniture, this is a great way to give it new life because a lot of people I know will throw out things like that, but there's no need to because you can give it a whole new life if you go back in with some sea spray and a little bit of texture. Texture makes a lot of things better. Texture makes things a lot better. Now, I won't do anything to this until it sets up a little bit, but it's pretty warm in here, so it'll set up pretty quickly. It'll start drying on me, and we'll have to go ahead and do a little bit of work. So what are you guys all doing on a Saturday night? Besides a few of you guys watching me. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do this. Okay guys, we're almost halfway there. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to kind of intermingle these two colors. They're not going to be so separate. We just want the two colors so that they'll give us what we're looking for.
Okay, now what you want to make sure is that you've gotten all of your top covered well. So go back over and thicken up any place that looks really, really thin because we're going to go back, we're going to settle this down some with our spackling knives. So if you haven't seen this before, it's almost like a Venetian plaster kind of look, but you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. All right, let's see. For those of you who just joined us, we are using Dixie Bell Sea Spray. We sprayed last weekend, so this week we're using Sea Spray. So we're kind of spraying both weekends, right? All right, so. As you can see, I've kind of created a almost like a checkerboard effect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take spackling knives and we're going to kind of make a, a Venetian plaster kind of feel over the top of it. And we want to kind of intermingle the pieces, the colors. I'm gonna switch to this side so you guys can see. And we're going to do a little bit more after this dries. We'll add some more color and stuff to it. Did you guys see the kitchen that I'm working on? Isn't that a fabulous kitchen? So we've got about half of it done, so you guys can see where we are. We're gonna scoot all of our little menagerie stuff down here so that I can get on down. And you guys can get kind of an idea of where we're headed with this. And we're gonna go from there. We're using this to add some unusual texture to the top of this, but when everything's said and done, it'll be almost completely smooth. You won't believe it by looking at the what's on the top, but it'll be almost completely smooth. I don't like my little area over here having this little spot, so I'm going to go back over it a little bit. There we go, that's much better, much better, much better. All right, so we're gonna go back in. Thank you guys for passing this along to your friends. I greatly appreciate it. If you don't follow me at 44 Marketplace, please take a minute and do that and follow me on YouTube. I am under Pam Haskins on YouTube.
looks like a big giant hot mess now, but I'm telling you, it's going to end up being something that is gonna be so different. You're gonna be saying, wow, Dixie Bell Sea Spray is an amazing product. And I don't think a lot of people know that much about it. And if you haven't tried it, you don't realize how nice and crusty it can make your piece. So that's the thing. A lot of people don't realize how crusty and dusty it can make your piece. And you don't just have to use one layer. For this finish, it may end up being two layers. I'm not really sure. Whoop, let me spin you guys on over so you can see where we are. Oh yeah, it's much better now. After it sits a little while, it does so much better. you guys have ever tried Dixie Bell Sea Spray? It is a totally amazing project. Project piece. I'm telling you, it's just, it mixes well with any kind of paint. Of course, I'm a Dixie Bell girl, so I love it with Dixie Bell paint, but it mixes really well with any kind of paint. brush really does a great job on this size top does an incredible job on this size top like I say if you had seen some of the boo-boos up close you would know why we're, we're doing over this top Can you guys see me? Let me scoot you over a little bit. There you go. We're closing in on the end of our top. for the noise my phone is supposed to be on do not disturb when I'm recording this but who knows all right we're gonna scoot it over on our little table over here now you guys can use colors that don't meld as well together um, like I say after I mixed my colors I realized that I didn't really like what I had going on as far as the colors went. I wanted something that was a, a little bit more of a contrast. Well, crud. I wanted something that was a little bit more of a contrast to what I had. So I added some coffee bean into my French linen just to give it a little bit darker shade. Of course, then I put my brush just now into sawmill gravy. So there's that. 
It's always an adventure with me. You never know what I'm going to do because I never know what I'm going to do. And I'm going to tell you, if it ends up you don't have enough texture, you can always go back in and add more texture. Because that's the great thing about Dixie Bell products. They work really, really well with one another. Now, because I started that one with the French linen mixture on the bottom, on the, the end, I'm going to carry that through up here. And I'm going to go a little heavier over my line because I have a feeling that before everything's said and done, I'm going to make that line disappear just because, just because I don't want it. No other reason. And with the texturizer, I can make it disappear. So, at this point, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I don't like it. I know that. All right, there we go. And for those of you who have asked, I have released a boot camp, a three day boot camp here in Georgia with me next February. There are only five spots available. So if you guys are interested, you might want to jump on tonight and grab your spot. It only takes 50% to hold your space. And the other 50% is not due until December. All right, so we're gonna go back in and we're gonna let this sit just a minute. I'm gonna chit chat with you guys and see if I can answer some questions. All right, so questions, let's see. And it's not gonna let me see. Yes, it rinses out of my brushes really easily or I wouldn't be using my nice brushes, I can tell you. All right, so now we're gonna go back in and we're going to go back over this like I did up there. And we're going to kind of meld them together because if you know me, I like crusty dusty, but I definitely don't want something that looks too plain. That's too boring. And those of you who follow me know I've got boot camp coming up this week. So you guys are going to get to see lots of cool things that these ladies are going to be working on. Uh, we're going to meet for dinner tomorrow night and start getting it ready. We're going to have boot camp all week this week, which is going to be super fun. Amanda was here last month for the boot camp. Well, July. And now you guys can make this melt together as much or as little as you want. You can leave as much texture as you want. But as you saw before, if I don't have enough texture, I go back in and add more. Because when I do it, I really want it to have a lot of different textures because I'm gonna be adding paint and glaze and that kind of thing to this. I'm just doing these to give me my base that I'm gonna be using. And it's better if you kind of make your, your swipes kind of almost crisscross so that you mix up the texture a little bit. I can tell you there is not enough of the white back here. Not at all. We're gonna let this sit just a minute because it's still a little wetter than I want. And then that way you guys can see what it's going to look like. And this is pretty much what we're going to get to do on the top today. But you can see down here where it's already started drying. Kind of the look that we're going for. We want it to have kind of an old world little bit of textured look. And as it dries, I still like to go back and forth over it a little to kind of create it. There's a light spot right there that I'll go back and I'll kind of 
hit up and make it be a little bit more. But when you're running your putty knife over it, you just kind of want to run it lightly. If you press down too hard, you'll notice it'll make a mark in your finish. Not a big deal because you can go back in and add just a little bit more of your um, color, your mixture, and settle it right back down. But this spot right here is really light. So we're gonna go back in and add a little bit there. We're gonna let it kind of start drying up a little and then we'll go back over it. Gonna add a little bit there, add a little bit there. But if you let it set just a minute, it does a little bit better on the spreading. And like I say, after this dries, I may still yet go back in and add a whole nother layer so that I can get the amount of texture that I'm really going for on this piece. Because I don't know if it shows on the video, but the texture is really what I'm wanting more than even just the color. I want it to look like plaster all over the top of this almost like a big old hot mess which right now it kind of does look like a hot mess which is great all right so we're going to let this dry i still have a couple of places that are a little lighter than i want them to be as far as the thickness of the material so I'm gonna go back in. And keep in mind, another part of it is how thick you mix your mixture. Um, the thicker you mix it, the longer it's gonna take to dry, but the faster, um, it, as it starts setting up, it'll create texture much easier. So, you guys kinda get an idea of what we're going with. And we're going to do this on the majority of the piece. I'm gonna slide you back so you can see what the entire piece looks like. The entire piece has some issues. Sorry guys. The entire piece has a few issues, but I do want you guys to kind of get an idea of what we're going for with this because it's definitely gonna be unique when we're finished. And we mixed sawmill gravy and French linen and coffee bean to get our look. And like I say, the best thing to do is to let it dry a little bit before we start mixing with it. So I'm going to turn you guys up. All right. So that's where we are. I hope that you guys took a minute to check out the kitchen that I'm working on today. I'm going to stick a fan on this so it can start drying tonight. Um, because I do want to layer another layer on there. And... I am having dinner with my boot camp people tomorrow night. So we will be live at nine o'clock and we will work on this piece some more. So thanks for tuning in and you guys have a great evening. Maybe. It's not gonna let me.